Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Kirishima X listener. It's Stability by Marinwa and Ellen Dill. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. The link will be in the description. Go check that out and let's go ahead and get into it. If there was one thing that you could always count on, it was the fact that whenever possible, your boyfriend was going to be touching you. In one way or another, Kirishima found a way to always have a hand on you when you were together. It wasn't a possessive thing or a control issue. Rather, he did it out of the subconscious desire to ensure that you were okay at all times, and as a self-grounding measure for himself. It was something that the two of you had become known for in the public eye. Always joined at the hip was one of the latest claims made by a media article you had scrolled past on your newsfeed. You knew that there were those who disapproved how often you two would hold hands, or link arms, or even throw your arms around each other. Kiri with his arm over your shoulders, and yours comfortably wrapped around his waist, in public, but you didn't care. You learned that from the beginning of your relationship, that Kiri relished physical touch, and with it being one of your own love languages, you also embraced it wholeheartedly. The displays of affection in public weren't for the benefit of others anyway, in fact, it started as a means to prevent your social anxiety from getting the better of you. Kirishima's status as pro-hero came with many responsibilities, one of your least favorites being the public appearances that he would have to make. They often involved large groups of people, and very few chances for you to get away to recenter yourself. The very first event you attended with your boyfriend, a mere month into dating, was nearly disastrous. It was some sort of gala charity event, and it was very much out of your comfort zone. But you agreed to attend with him because you wanted to support him. It was barely an hour after you had arrived that you felt the effects of the crowded room, flashing cameras, and the mindless small talk starting to bear down on you. Your hands had started shaking, and your breathing had become much shallower. Looking around in the most discreet manner you could manage, you tried to find somewhere you could run off to, to get control of yourself before your anxiety became a full-blown panic attack. Your breathing became more rapid as you realized there was nowhere for you to go. It wasn't something that you had had a full discussion with Kirishima about yet, so when he stepped behind you and slowly, as though to let you know that he was there, wrapped his arms around your waist, Tress pressed against your back and spoke softly into your ear. Just breathe with me, sweetheart. You almost burst into tears, so gratefully for your boyfriend's seemingly unending awareness. When you asked him about how he knew, later, he gave a one-shoulder shrug and a crooked smile, stating simply that he had had worked with someone with social anxiety and learned what to look for. Since that day, he had always kept you close when you went out together. You gave a deep sigh, rolling your eyes at another article that made observations about your relationship with the pro-hero, and shut off your phone. Beside you, there was movement as Kiri rolled over, blindly padding around the bed in an attempt to find you. His hand finally landed on your waist, and a small squeak was forced from you when he dragged you closer to him. Your back, once again, pressed flush against his chest. You tried to flip over to face him, but he whined in your ear, and you playfully tapped the arm that trapped you against him. Kiri, you're not going anywhere. He mumbled in your hair. You could hear the smile in his voice. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just trying to look at my pretty boyfriend. You snicker as his arm quickly loosens, and you take the opportunity to flip yourself over, tangling your legs with his. You look up at the man in front of you, and gently push the strands of his hair that have fallen loose in his sleep up and out of his face. He hums happily at the feeling, and you let your hand come to rest on his neck. Good morning, pretty boy. His eyes blink open, and a smile spreads across his face. Good morning, sweetheart. He tightens his arms around you again, and pulling you in closer, tucks you under his chin, and you nuzzle into his chest, arm wrapping around his waist, fingers gently tracing some scars that he had running up his right side, 
to the planes of his back. Didn't hear you come in last night. You mumble quietly. Didn't want to wake you up. I came in really late. He paused, and you could feel the muscles in his arms flex around you, as though he was trying to pull you closer still. There was a situation. You could practically feel the weight of his words. You gently pressed a kiss to his sternum, knowing that whatever had happened had left an impression on the red man hero. Usually, he would have launched into a detailed account of his night of heroic deeds, but this morning he remained quiet. You knew when that happened, things had become ugly. You've learned that in these moments, Kiri just needed you to be there for him, to ground him, just as he had grounded you in your moments of panic. And how could you possibly say no to him? Your hand alters its course of tracing his scars, and instead comes to rest on his shoulder, thumb absent-mindedly rubbing circles into the muscle. He releases a small breath and presses his lips to the crown of your head. I'm so happy you're here with me, you affirm to him, and his hand squeezes your side in acknowledgement. He knows what your words really mean. Thank you for coming back to me alive. I love you. The words are a whisper against the top of your head. You smile into his chest. I love you too. Alright, so that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!